It's the people. Always smiling. Vietnam is kind of my home now. I just love how busy it is. People are all friendly and really kind, so I really like it. Our experience is that there's multiple actions underway to clear any roadblocks in relation to foreign investors coming to Vietnam. And for those of you in the education sector, you should seriously consider coming to Vietnam. Hello and welcome to a brand new version of Vietnam and I on FBNC and this is Hai Yen, your host. Today we have a special guest. She is a real academic, diligent and also visionary leader. She is now the Pro Vice Chancellor and also the General Director of RMIT Vietnam. And please join me in welcoming Professor Claire Markin. Hello, it's wonderful to be here today. I'm so looking forward to this conversation. Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for joining us today. It's such a honor to have you in the show. And to start off, I'm ready to hear your story related to your journey all the way from Australia to Vienna. And if it's possible, can you share a little bit about how you got involved in RMIT Vietnam, please? Absolutely. So I really started when I was at RMIT in Australia and part of my role was to um, learn from RMIT Vietnam. And there were so many amazing things going on in Vietnam that I heard about that I immediately decided I wanted to be part of it. So when the opportunity arose, I applied to come over to Vietnam to live here and to be part of it. And it's absolutely uh, exceeded my expectations. And now I'm in the position of telling the rest of the world and RMIT in Australia how excellent RMIT Vietnam is. Cool, amazing. And you've been here just for about a year, but I feel like you already live a local Vietnamese woman already. For example, like you enjoy cafe soda every single morning, right? And then also you start adding nook mum, fish sauce, and even like shrimp sauce, mum tom, everything <laughs> that you eat. Last but not least, like you even can ride a motorbike as well. Yes. Wow. I just wonder how did the courage come from? Oh, that's a great question. I think with the fish sauce, I have a new thing as well that in Australia, it's very famous to have something called chicken salt, which is sort of um, salt that's flavored with chicken flavoring. And so I've started to put with the fish sauce a little bit of the chicken salt and it's sort of the fusion of Australia and Vietnam, the flavors together. So uh, right. it's quite a dish. But in terms of courage, I guess with a motorbike riding, I was looking at everyone on the streets and this incredible vibe and this, you know, um, sort of river of motorbikes. And I thought, I have to be part of that. I can't just sit and watch this anymore. So I managed to um, get onto a motorbike and start to become part of it. It was such an exciting thing to do. So, um, and just the other day I went shopping and I bought something that I actually don't know what it is, um, but it looks tasty and I thought, I'll give it a go. We'll see what happens. So I'll let you know what that's like. Do you? enjoy Vietnamese food that you mentioned before. Is there anything that you want to try in the future or you want to cook it even? So there is something that one of my friends eats, which is, I'm not quite so sure what sort of fish it is, but it's on the back of a motorbike and it's hanging up. And sometimes it's wrapped in plastic and sometimes it's not um, on the back of a motorbike and they cook it. I think it's a squid. I'm not sure, but I will try that one day. That's one of the things I haven't tried yet. Nice. I can see the enjoyment of you in the life, related to the life in Vietnam. You're very excited. Yes. And um, you've been here, as I say, like for almost a year. Anything else related to the cultural experience that, that lasts a very lasting impression on you other than that? Oh, absolutely. I think a few things. One is the absolute beauty of Vietnam. Uh, it's such a beautiful country and so diverse and I've had the privilege of traveling around Vietnam and really seeing all the, the different types of terrain, the different regions, the different um, environments of Vietnam, which is really incredible and something just of natural beauty. Um, but also I think the Vietnamese people are absolutely awesome. And, um, you know, from my observation and working closely with Vietnamese people, I just love the positivity, the can-do attitude, the... Um, approach to solving problems and really that um, sense of collegiality and something that everyone wants to be positive about the future. So it's an amazing place to be and, and I love every day that I'm here. 
Oh, thank you so much. It's good to hear that. I take it as a compliment for Vietnamese as well. Okay. So um, I'm just curious that you spend most of, most of the time here in Ho Chi Minh City or you easily go on business trip to the other provinces and cities in Vietnam? Yes, I often go to other cities as well. And uh, mm -hmm. I've just back from Hanoi. Hanoi's a fascinating city and um, also full of history and different from Ho Chi Minh City. Mm -hmm. uh, I've really enjoyed going to Hue and seeing the Imperial City and walking around the cool. old buildings and it's so atmospheric in Hue. And from Ho Chi Minh City, often I go to Vang Tao or to Ho Tram and walk along the beach and enjoy the beautiful um, views of the sunset and um, walk up and have a lovely dinner on the beach and really enjoy the time away from Ho Chi Minh City and it's a crazy and busy vibe. So, um, yes, I often go to other places as well. Nice. It's good to hear that you really enjoy the sceneries and also different landscapes all around Vietnam, which is from the north, center, and also the south of Vietnam. Um, we have a pretty good greenery uh, environment in here. And regarding to this, um, do you have any CRS program in here for the student can understand and protect the environment as well? Absolutely. So RMIT is very committed to our contribution back to Vietnam and it's part of our obligation as a university to give back to the communities in which we operate and serve. So we have so many initiatives that are um, operating at any time, both in community engagement, but also in our research. Some of them recently, we just participated in plogging, which is um, cleaning up the rubbish on the roadside and talking about the environment and education. We've got a lot of long history in that area. Some of our amazing research is also around things such as um, detecting heavy metal is in fish and looking at agriculture in the Mekong and how um, you can use sensors to predict in those regions. So just a few, but there's so many things that we do in our community engagement. Nice. It was great. So you seem like enjoying Vietnam a lot, even the culture and also, do you have any cultural difference that you experienced so far or anything new, which is like interesting to you? Yes, yes, absolutely. I think that um, I was just walking down the street with a friend, a Vietnamese friend mm -hmm. on the weekend actually. And she, she and I were discussing things such as the expectation of parents. And mm -hmm. in Australia, parents' expectations are very different. And as a parent, my expectations of my children were very different from her expectations of her children. And so um, we were discussing, uh, you know, how, how has that happened? How are these cultural differences formed? She's about to go to Australia for the first time as well. And she said, why would it be rude for me to ask someone's age? And I thought, yeah, that's a really interesting question. So in Australia, it wouldn't necessarily come up how old someone is, but maybe in Vietnam, you're often asked what your age is. So I'm... Um, sort of we discuss the differences between us and I think that's just scratching the surface of the differences but there's also a lot of similarities and Australians and Vietnamese uh, get along famously well and love each other's company and there's um, lots of fun times when Australians and Vietnamese come together. Yeah. Yeah. I can um, feel that because like uh, apart from the age as well, people who are here in Vietnam, they consider when they ask somebody about the age, the marriage stages, yes. even even the salary as well. It's made that they care for you. They care about you. It's not about like curiosity or something like that. So yeah, that's one of the part. I do just mention that, um, do you have a lot of Vietnamese friends so far for the last one year? So did you pick up any Vietnamese word or you start learning it? I, I've been learning Vietnamese for, I, it's 508 days and uh, Vietnam is a very, very difficult language. So I've actually got to the point though that I can read most of the signs and I've worked out most of the signs on the street are actually about food um, and different sorts of food. And sometimes um, I'll work out that, oh, that's something that's a negative statement because of a particular word in there. And I can um, work out basic things, but it's very, very difficult to learn Vietnamese and um, I'll keep persevering and keep trying. Nice. Hopefully you're going to get fluent in even like writing and also speaking Vietnamese as well. Vietnamese is hard because we have a tons, we have six different tons as well. 
um, regarding to the pronunciation and the stuff. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about um, education, your academic field. So in the rapid advancement of the technology and also the globalization right now, which challenges and also the opportunity do we see that the next generation of Vietnamese students they can face too? Yes, I think there's so many opportunities for the graduates of um, both RMIT and for the young people of Vietnam. This country is absolutely um, crazily going ahead at a million miles an hour. And even in the time I've been here, there's so many significant changes. And um, the opportunities for young people in this country is that entrepreneurial spirit, the willingness to try new things and to have a go at something is absolutely incredible. Vietnamese are also incredibly hardworking um, and um, dedicated to the, their work. Yeah. Um, in terms of students, the sort of skills that we teach at university really equips them for that future so that you really can do anything. And um, I'm so proud that we have a university that, that does that. I think in terms of challenges that um, are faced in Vietnam, um, with such a fast-moving economy and such a fast-moving environment, it's really important to keep up and to keep relevant and to apply knowledge and to apply skills. So lots of opportunities and some challenges. Yeah, I do agree with you. So uh, which role of RMIT Vietnam do you say in terms of addressing that challenges and also opportunity to the student for them to prepare better for their future when they graduate from university? Yes, so I think having an international education in Vietnam is a huge advantage and the ability to graduate with a degree from RMIT is really the ticket to a fantastic future. Okay. But it's also the training. So when we teach students in discipline knowledge and have them really embrace the graduate attribute, attributes such as problem solving and critical thinking and everything that's required for the future, uh, I can see our students studying so hard and applying those skills for their future and so well. I'm no, so it's meant that in RMIT you can buy both of the theoretical theoretical part and also the practical part as well, even inside and during the program that they study in here. So it make it very good for them even before they graduate from the university here. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, I think cool. that we know that we have to apply knowledge in practice to learn. And so giving students a safe space to apply knowledge through practical experience and web-based learning, internships, and giving real case studies on real problems, getting industry speakers in, this is really the hallmarks of RMIT's education. Nice, no, great. All right, I have learned that when you were appointed to be the general director of RMIT Vietnam, one of the first things that come to your mind, which is you want to contribute to reshape part of that, the Vietnamese educational system here in Vietnam. So can you share a little bit regarding to this point? And what do you think, how or how important of the reform and also the restructure to Vietnamese educational system? Yes, excellent. I think that 23 years ago, RMIT was invited into Vietnam by the Prime Minister to model what interna international education would look like. And I think we've done an excellent job and we're so proud of our contribution to Vietnamese society through our education. To shape the future though, some of the things we're looking for is to make Vietnam an international student destination as well. And you may have seen walking through the campus today that we have students from other countries already here, but we'd like to have more to showcase Vietnam to the rest of the world. And that's something that we're very passionate about. I think also um, we're here to help um, shape the future of education generally. And education is changing just as society is changing and the economy is changing. And so modeling that future is one thing that we do at RMIT Vietnam. Yep. Thank you so much. And last but not least, to all of the potential investor and also maybe the partners, individuals all around the world, if being asked, what would you say to them related to Vietnam experience that you have, for example, like the prospect or the recommendation or something like that, or even the warning if you want? Excellent question. I think that you, the biggest advice I give is come to Vietnam. It's a fantastic country. It's absolutely developing in terms of its economy, society. It's um, progressive and entrepreneurial. The Vietnamese people and government are so welcoming and willing to help foreign investors. And it is also a place that you can really engage with a fantastic culture and history, fantastic people. 
And it's absolutely the thing that you should invest in. Our experience is that there's multiple actions underway to clear any roadblocks in relation to foreign investors coming to Vietnam, creating great policy and legislative environments for that to occur. And for those of you in the education sector, you should seriously consider coming to Vietnam. There's a fantastic population of young people in Vietnam that are looking for international education to improve their situation, but also for their families and for their futures. So at RMIT University, we're really committed to making Vietnam an international student destination. And that includes promoting the benefits of an international education in Vietnam and to enjoy both Vietnam and having an Australian degree from an Australian university in Vietnam. The way that we go about achieving that is that we promote Vietnam, RMIT Vietnam in other countries around the world, but we also have students from RMIT Vietnam going to our Melbourne campus, so RMIT Melbourne, and learning about Australia as well. Thank you so much for your sharing today and it's such a privilege for us today. Yeah? I wish you pleasant time in Vietnam with unique experiences so far. Yeah. It was wonderful to be here today. Thanks for yeah. interviewing me. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in and see you in the next episode of Vietnam and I on FVNC. Very different to Australia. Um, I enjoy it very much. It's, uh, I really enjoy the people. Right. Um, they're extremely friendly. Uh, food is fantastic. And uh, I very much enjoy working on this campus. Vietnam itself is it's a lovely place. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Well, Vietnam is kind of my home now because I've been in Vietnam for more than 20 years, you know, almost, almost 25 years. Yeah. I speak a little bit of Vietnamese too. Not very much, but I try. What I like most, I think I like the Vietnamese food the most. Yeah. Still after 20 years. It's a, a very, very vibrant city. Um, I really enjoyed getting to, I went for a walk last night, um, seeing something that's very different to Melbourne where I'm from. Uh, and then I was up very early this morning and went for a nice walk when it was a lot quieter. So I didn't get hit by any bikes. <laughs> Be honestly, it's really good. Um, I really satisfy with this life. People are all friendly and really kind. 